Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back to Broker Talk. Today's show is all about content. And I'm so lucky to have a good colleague and friend I've worked with for many years, Eileen Newman. She's a marketing executive, has done it for so many different people and communicate and organizations. Eileen, welcome to the show. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for having me. Uh, it, it's just fantastic to be here with you. And you and I have had conversations over the years about how we talk to clients, how we communicate with them, what we say, how we say it. Let's talk for a moment about our lifetime, not generations gone by, how how communications has changed. Because when you started, there was when I started, there wasn't the internet. Um, cars did drive, airplanes did fly, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just changed radically before there were middlemen that you had to go through to reach a broader audience. So if you think about, um, you know, media in general, there would be PR people who were pitching reporters Reporters would decide whether or not your story was worthy or relevant for their readers or viewers, and then they would um, publish or not publish what you wanted them to to tell people. And now you you don't have to have the middleman. You can self-publish, and people are finding channels that are relevant to themselves. Um, you can broadcast yourself, whatever you want to broadcast, um, but that also means that there's a lot more noise. So you really need to make sure that you're thinking about who's my audience, what are they looking for, and, you know, is what I'm telling them um, going to resonate with them? Like, am I doing a good job uh, of communicating it? And am I doing a good job of rising above all of the other exactly. noise that's in the um, in the day to day for everybody now? Sure, sure. Thousands of of media images come across, especially if we're looking at our phones, looking at our computers. Um, thousands of things come come by, uh, let alone our emails and things like that. Um, but you bring up a very, very good point. Um, who's who's your audience? Where are they? When when is the best time to communicate to them? That has gotten so much more sophisticated. Has AI changed that? Uh, I think AI is really like a complicated uh, topic, right? Because in lots of ways, people are using it as a tool to help them. And that's great. I, I think, you know, it, no, nobody's said, you know, I'm not going to use a calculator, right? right. So with math, like it, it, using a tool like that wasn't really cheating. You know, you were able to use it and and save a lot of time. But with AI, because it's it's written or verbal or there's this different feeling about it. So where it can really save you a lot of time, I think you have to really think about where am I using it and how do I deploy it? Right. Um, I personally will use it sometimes as a starter for a first draft, um, because a lot of times if you're just staring at a blank piece of paper, that can be difficult. So having something to react to is really helpful, but you want to shape that and make that your own. And, you know, as AI's gotten more and more sophisticated, so have the things that let you know whether or not somebody's using AI. And you just really don't want to be um, in a situation where someone is just like, oh, they couldn't even take the time to think about like what to say to me. Like they just pressed a button and that was fine. So you want to um, you want to be thoughtful about how you deploy it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, that brings up the point who you're talking to, and why you're talking to them, because a, a, I remember um, we're both out of the advertising marketing business before we got into what we're, we're currently doing. And um, I remember reading Ogilvy's book on advertising and he revolutionized advertising back in that day because he had incredible amounts of copy. It was the Volkswagen ads and he would talk and talk and talk. And it was his opinion that the more that you said, if somebody was interested, they had all the information there. And um, I think that's true if, say, for instance, you have um, 
uh, just been diagnosed with something, whatever it is, doesn't have to be cancer, it could be something, you know, um, you're going to go and you're going to find everything and you're going to read about it. But if you are having stomach issues, you're going to say, you know, and, and you've been talking about it, uh, you might just all of a sudden get some Tums ads or some Pepsi AC ads that yes. show up that, that, oh, I was just thinking about that, you know, not realizing that's augmented reality. That's, that's another level of um, the way your computer is listening to you, by the way. So is your phone. And they may not be recording everything, but they have it and they could use it. So, you know, 1984 is, is today. Uh, but it wasn't the government imply, imp imposing that on you. It was everybody saying, hey, I want you to know everything about me. Here's my lunch today. Yeah, I think people are a lot more comfortable with um, sharing a lot more things than they used to be. And I think it's part of it's because they see the benefit, yeah. right? Like I'm, I'm getting served up ads that are relevant to me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as long as... As long as something is relevant, it's fine. Like I'm, I'm okay with it. It's when you're giving someone something that is not something that they're looking for, or not something that they're interested in, that you run into problems. And I think that's really the piece that people need to think about when they are reaching out, either with content or you know, with whatever your ask is. You need to know who it is on the other side of that ask and what it is that they want. And you need to package your ask in a way that's going to resonate with that person. Exactly. Now, I just, uh, you know, I, I didn't do your resume at the beginning. I know it well. But, you know, at, at the beginning, you were talking to people about Bertucci's, which is a, a fabulous right. pizza place. And and you work for Fidelity Investments, where I first met you. And and, and you were communicating pub all the public relations messages coming out of there. Then you were at... Uh, WGBH, which is a public uh, NPR station, and you're communicating to a different office, every single one of them. And now you're, you're working for a prestigious um, top line private school. Every single one of those messages is uh, and audiences are very different and they want to hear different things. How have you changed as you've changed the people that you're communicating with? You know, I think the most important thing is to be adaptable. Um, you know, and I remind myself of that all the time, especially as I get further into my career. I mean, you don't want to be the person who's just like, well, when I used to do it or this, it, because um, things change. And I think, you know, one of the um, one of the smartest things I've done is had sort of the, um, you know, reverse mentorship, right, where you have you have people who are younger than you who are helping you to see, you know, what's their point of view? Um, what are they thinking about? And right. especially in, you know, in marketing and PR and communications where you're talking to a lot of different audiences, just, just that point of view is helpful um, because they are of, uh, you know, they reside in those segments, I guess you could say. But you, um, but they also can help you to understand where am I getting my information? Right. Like, you know, hardly any of them are reading newspapers anymore, right? Like everybody's getting the skim or some other source of information. Um, they're getting it curated by Apple. It, it's really hard to get um, news stories out through normal channels sometimes. Right. People just aren't there anymore. I right. mean, you know, there, there are audiences who are, but those audiences aren't necessarily growing. Right. Right. I, I think of the changes that have come about now. Uh, when I started it, uh, started a billboard was a billboard ad. You had that. You had to grab that person driving by at 60 miles an hour or whatever your state law is. Um, but and newspapers had incredible depth of stories. Uh, magazines, magazines, you know, they're they're in a tough way now, too. Um, but it's almost like when you communicate it, it's almost like billboard. You you want to grab them right away in some way and not in a clickbait way, like really low echelon kind of businesses do. It's not clickbait. You want to have value. 
and and you want to communicate that quickly. Now, is, does that change from from um, an investment company to a, a, a public radio to a, a institution like uh, your 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 school? Uh, I'm going to say that the basic premise does not change. You have to understand who the audience is and what they're looking for. And then that guides how much and how you present it, all of those things. So the audiences may be looking for different things, but the way that you approach it really has to always be the same. Right. And, and I would say increasingly, you really need to think about what is the day-to-day -day like for this person? Yeah, you know, I forget what the what the stat is about how many emails the average person gets per day. 500. Um, yeah. So and I, I just knew it was less than what I generally, but that's a, that's a lot of stuff coming at you from just that one channel. So if you're getting a lot of um, all of that thrown at you, and then suddenly this thing that you weren't expecting comes from somewhere else, there has to be something com compelling about it, but whoever sent it also has to think about how busy you are and how the information is presented in a way that makes it easy for you to digest, easy for you to understand what somebody's asking you to do. Right. Um, you know, I had started telling you about this before. Um, I'm always like pushing this agenda. And, you know, sometimes people think that, oh, well, you know, she's the communications person. She has a point of view. Uh, but I just started reading a book uh, that's called Writing for Busy Readers. And it's written by a Harvard professor, two Harvard professors. But they're both behavioral economists. And, you know, the, their research is from how do people behave? It's not necessarily about writing per se. Mm -hmm. So really thinking about... Um, you know, it's it's nice if you can show off your writing skills. It's great, like if you're writing a novel, but in the day-to-day -day transactional, I need this, I need you to know this, you might want to dial it back a little and think about what is the most effective and efficient way for me to deliver this message so that somebody receives it and does what I want them to do. There, there's a movie out right now, and it's it's a uh, about a writer, and um, he's having difficulty time getting published, and um, he's a black writer, um, and some other writer d came up and used vernacular, and the writing what what the other writer was saying was kind of mundane, and and he is like I want I want better content, but he went totally. Uh, towards that and used vernacular, you know, uh, ghetto type vernacular. And all of a sudden he became worldly famous. And it's really a fascinating kind of story told in a different way that now we have a, a thing called influencers, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. People who say things, oh, I like this, you know? And that all started with... Uh, 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 sites where you gather testimonials for yourself, you know, and uh, that's kind of it. And an influencer has people who want to listen, usually very attractive people <laughs> or very, op very opinionated people. And uh, I don't know if it's eye candy or if it's communication. I just don't know. Um, you know, I, I, again, I think it, it's about relevance. So there are some people where, you know, you might perceive that, but they may not be relevant to, you know, you and your life, right? Like, I don't, I don't know what your relationship to the Kardashians is, Larry, but like, that might be, you know, it, it may not be your thing. The royal. Right? But influence, what's really great about influencers, I'm sorry about all the, the pinging. Um, what's really great about influencers is that in this world where we're all so connected, you can, you know, you can be uh, what they call a micro influencer, right? Like you have a very tiny niche, but that's your space. And there are people who are really interested in that space. 
So it's not really about numbers. Sometimes it's about the the quality of the pool of people that you're able to attract given what you want to talk about. Right. If you want to have the right people. Yeah, you, you absolutely do. I'm, I'm a real estate agent. Um, everybody on this knows that. It's called broker talk. Um, but I don't want to work with everybody. I have a, a specific bent of people that I service really well. Uh, I grew up in an old home in an historic area. And I frankly love that. Um, it's never been uh, square footage and rooms to me and an investment. It's always been a house that could become a home. And uh, the difference between the two is where you make your memories. You know, it's a home when you have memories there and and you you love your bedroom because the sun comes in and you're an early morning riser, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not interested in working with people who are just don't care. You know, I'll take this one or I'll take that one um, because I have to uh, I have to live somewhere and they don't really care about the community or what's going on with the neighborhood and everything. Uh, I think that communicating directly to people who feel like that, um, they get it right away. And the others, uh, they can work with someone else. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to work with everyone, but frankly, I don't. <laughs> and you know, I think it's really about thinking about how do you, um, what's, what's your niche or how are you positioning yourself? Right? Like you could be an expert in, you know, luxury properties or mid-level properties or, but as long as you are, um, in a space that you have some level of expertise and also, you know, you don't want to define your niche too narrowly because it has to be, um, broad enough that you can make a living, but, it helps people to understand what they're going to get if they're working with you, right? right. So, and, and your niche could be high levels of service, or it could be, you know, uh, condos versus, it doesn't matter, like, as long as you're clear about what you're doing. And, you know, sometimes people, um, they define it so broadly that it's hard for people to know what they're going to get. Right. And that may not be helpful either, right? Well, or you could, or you could just be like, "Look, I'm, I'm a churn and burn model, and somebody's okay with that, right? Like, because they know you're just going to get them something fast, and then just keep it moving, and which is fine. But it's just, it's really about helping somebody understand what are they going to get when they work with you that they're not going to get with somebody else. I recently recently had a show with our our mutual friend Paige Arnoff Fenn who owns Mavens and Moguls, and she's a brand expert. And she was talking about as you build your brand, you have to be absolutely consistent. You have to be the same person in, in your communications that you are in your real life, that you are at your, your uh, church, yeah. if you go to church, or if you're you know on the field with your kid watching, it has to all be consistent. And that, that becomes the message that if you are consistently the same thing, rather than saying, I'm this, and then when your reality is, you're something completely different, that disconnect is a big, big problem. Yeah. You know? Consistency is so important um, and, and repetition, right? Because you want right. to be reinforcing the message all the time. But, right. um, and you know, sometimes people can be very black and white about consistency. It's, it's really about, you know, I'm always myself, I might be, um, I might behave differently in different situations, but it's always consistent with who I am. And right. I think as long as you're, as long as you're, um, at your core behaving in the same manner, it's perfect. Like situationally things could change. Yeah. So your brand is one thing, but how you communicate and which is what we're talking about, the content that you create. So we have so many platforms here. Does it make a difference whether you're just communicating on one or you do need to talk on TikTok and uh, Stitch and, you know, um, uh, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn and, and, you know, there's hundreds of platforms. Yeah, again, it depends on who your audience is and where they where they are. Right. So you really want to think about, and, you know, you might have um, 
different segments. So, you know, if you have, uh, sometimes you divide along lines of age, right? right? So you may have people buying whatever you're selling and some of them are very young, some of them are older. So, you know, things like older audiences are on Facebook and younger audiences are, you know, doing things like TikTok and, um, and Snapchat and other places that, you know, people um, who are older aren't. Right. And luxury people, you'll only find them on LinkedIn because they're not doing the social media. It's a business platform. So, you know, if you want to capture them in some way. Um, yeah. And sometimes your message changes too, right? Like um, sometimes people are um, are motivated by different things. So, you know, it's not that you're changing your overall message, but you're emphasizing one thing to one group and something else to another group because that's what resonates with them. So some of it's about prioritization, some of it's about emphasis, but you really you always want to be thinking about who is the person that I'm looking to talk to and what are they, what are they interested in? Right. Right. So <laughs> it, it, we're calling it communication, but really we're looking for engagement. Right. Exactly. And I think one of the things too, that you really want to think about um, is, is this person ready to hear what I want them to hear? versus what did they need to hear first? So I think a good example is, you know, I did a lot of merger and acquisition work in my career. And, um, you know, the people who are doing the deals, once that happens, they're very interested in, oh, I really want to talk about what's the vision for the future, what's the move forward plan, all of these things. And the employees who have just been acquired are worried about, Am I still going to have a job? Am I going to still have the same benefits? Does my kid still go to the same doctor? Like, you know, so as the communications person, I was like, look, we got to clear the decks so that they, all of those worries are set aside before we start talking about these other things, because these people need to be ready to hear it. Right. So you do really want to think about like, not just what do I want to tell them? But are they ready to hear it? What well, what can I do to make sure that, you know, they are ready to hear my message and that it's going to resonate? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Where, when, and how. And, and really, we're talking about communication. But again, I'm saying we're really saying something because we want them to have that value, whatever that is. But we want them to talk back. And I, I, I've heard that it's a three-step process. You first... Um, communicate and engage, then uh, communicate, then you engage with them, and then you provide the value, the information, and then it, it starts fast. It starts after that, um, uh, that it's a, it's a multi-step process, and your message has to be the same over and over, you know, so you're- Well, I think you also want to be, um, whether you're doing it formally or informally, you always want to be looking for feedback on whether or not what you're doing is working, right? right? So, you know, in more sophisticated operations, you're A-B testing a lot of your messages or, you know, just, you know, anecdotally, you might notice that people are responding to the things that you're sending out more in the morning than in, in the afternoon or exactly. certain, you know, yeah. so just really like being aware of um, the feedback that you're getting on right. your efforts and then adjusting accordingly. And also just really thinking about that in terms of, you know, how you're segmenting your audience, because sometimes it's different for, you know, different segments of the population. And you just really want to make sure that you're being thoughtful about how you're analyzing that. Like it's, it's not a monolith. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've always enjoyed with you personally is, um, how we talk about worst practices, people who do things the worst way. And you think, oh my God, how are they, how are they even in business? But um, one of the first things I always say in communication, if you are communicating with people and they communicate back, answer them, pick up your oh. phone, 
if you if the call to action is is their phone call, pick up your damn phone. What are <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think this is one of the things that I think about. You know, I just gave my my spiel about adaptability, but I also notice, um, you know, younger people are less inclined to pick up the phone and actually talk to someone. Yeah. yeah. And that drives me nuts because I think it's so important in relationship building to talk to people. Yeah. But I'm also, I'm like, oh, am I just being, um, you know, stubborn about that belief? And, you know, it's yeah. possible that, you know, younger people don't want somebody calling them. So, like, I, I do think you really have to think long and hard about where you get entrenched. And yeah. sometimes, you know, there are places where, yeah. Like, oh. But in general, I do kind of feel like the more personal touch is... Um, in a relationship business is really important. Right. I have and a uh, 30, right. I have a 32, 33, 33 now, uh, year old son. And I learned a long time ago from him, he won't answer the phone. He you never leave him a message because he'll never listen to it. But if you want him, you text him. And you know, if, if I need to talk to him, I said, Do you have a minute? You know, and I keep it to a minute when I talk to him. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's just making the adjustments on your end. Right. So that it right. works for the other person because you're, you know, your family relationships aside. Right. But like you just really do want to think about um, what's working for that other person. And I would say, too, like people think that um, communicating is talking. And I do want to put in like a big plug for listening. Right. Like you don't necessarily think about that as as part of it, but it's so important because you need to hear what people are saying to you. Listening is a huge and thank you for bringing this up. Listening is probably the second most important. Have a good message, but listen to your feedback and, and adjust. You said adaptable, be resilient. And I wasn't speaking about my son uh, because he represents that whole age group. And right. It's not just him and it's not just father son thing. It's communication to this group and they're the new first time home buyers. That's the age group. So I don't call them, but the first thing I do is ask them how they want to be communicated with. Yeah. And, and um, there's a couple of no, no's for me personally. I don't want to talk business with somebody on WhatsApp. Um, I use that for my foreign clients who, you know, it's easier to, to get there, but the WhatsApp quite often because it's an encrypted and there's no, no, they're just people wasting your time. I don't know why people want to do that, but they like to do that, you know, and talk about something, but never do anything. And, uh, but that's me, I, you know, I don't want to be, uh, communicated with only through Facebook messenger. It's it's not productive for me. I'm, uh, yes, I have a Facebook page, but but um, text me, call me. <laughs> but the, yeah. uh, it's not important how I want to be communicated with until later. It's important to know how you want to be communicated with. And um, I think I want to go back because you said something that I think is really important. Um, asking someone, yeah, what works best for you goes a long way in yeah. getting it right, but also in demonstrating that you care that this works for them. Yeah, yeah. I have always thought in my head, tell a better story, get a better result. And uh, I think that you have to really think about what your stories are and who you're telling them to and and why it's important um, for them, you know? Yeah. And, and they're gonna let you know right away, one way or another. What haven't I asked you about? Uh, we could talk for hours. What haven't I asked you about that that you think is important? Well, I think, you know, the um, we haven't really talked a lot about content, which I also think is really important because, you know, earlier we were talking about advertising and I think advertising have its has its place. Yeah. But again, content uh, is at a higher level of relevance for people sometimes. So really thinking about um, telling a story that somebody is gonna be interested in making it relevant for their life. 
um, you know, demonstrating something by showing them versus constantly telling and, and being um, transactional right. is also really helpful. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you can combine that with it being entertaining. And so you're, you're learning something, it's entertaining, it's engaging. So content can really be your friend as you're, um, you know, talking about your business and certainly like just content about properties is people want to see things. They want to experience things. They want to know what it would it be like to live there. Um, you know, how is my life going to be different if like, this is my house, so really figuring out like what is the what is the story that's really going to sell this right. property I think is really helpful. And we, we we know from from this show and and from practice that that real estate agents the only thing if all they place as their content is I just sold this house or here's my happy buyer you know their first time home you know that kind of stuff that you're missing the point because that's you know okay good for you but but how do those people feel about that and will they come back and have they given you a good testimonial um and that way um having you say you're doing a good job is advertising having your mom say you're doing a good job is public relations and you know you want your date to say you're a good date you know, because it's far yeah. more believable. It's far more authentic. So uh, wrapping it up, content is a content creation. Uh, really think about who, you, what you're saying and who you're saying it to. And then create yeah. content. Third party endorsement is always better than marketing, right? Yeah. Like you don't want it to appear as if you have an agenda. And marketing is supportive of all of that, right? But um definitely like someone who I value their opinion saying something to me, you know, we all know this from like, you know, we get Netflix recommendations, right? right? Like I can see a trailer for a movie. I can see, you know, the four stars that show up uh, as part of that. But if one of my friends says, oh, you have to go see this, that carries way more weight, yeah. right? So, so real people and connections and people within your network, validating their experiences is always better. Yeah. Eileen, thank you so much for making this a great show. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Look forward to seeing you in person, you know, petting your little dog, Gracie. Uh, and, yeah, uh, and she behaved. She's here next to me. So I'm like, oh. Been very quiet, I noticed. Right. Well, <laughs> sometimes things work. Yeah, sometimes. Great yeah. to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks. And um, thank you for listening to Broker Talk. I'm not going to ask you to like and subscribe and hit that thing because, you know, um, because you'll know what you want to do if you want to do that. Um, thank you. And uh, thanks again, Eileen.